Uh, you've got folks on the other side of this ballot. Uh, that have one thing in common, well, two things. They all supported Donald Trump, and they all support repealing mask mandates and vaccine verifications. You can have more contrast and more consequence with this election. Uh, to have a governor on the other side of his ballot that will be joining the other Republican governors and pushing back against life-saving interventions to address this pandemic, to eliminate mask wearing in our public schools, putting our kids' health at risk and their education risk. That was California Governor Gavin Newsom shortly after casting his vote in the state's recall election on Saturday. President Biden will travel to California Monday to campaign on behalf of the governor. Newsom, a Democrat, is fighting to keep his seat after a petition to oust him garnered more than one and a half million signatures. Many of the organizers say that they were motivated by opposition to pandemic restrictions Newsom enforced last year. The pandemic is once again dominating the race. Candidates are divided over how to combat rising cases of COVID-19. More than 6 million people have already cast ballots by mail in early in-person voting. Election day is Tuesday. Polls currently show support for Newsom growing. The uh, YouGov poll from late August found that 57 percent of likely voters said that they plan to vote no on recalling the governor. Only 43 percent said that they plan to vote yes. Newsom is facing a total of 46 challengers. 24 of them are Republicans, including conservative talk show host Larry Elder, TV personality and former athlete Caitlyn Jenner, former gubernatorial candidate John Cox, and former San Diego mayor Kevin Faulkner. And Kevin Faulkner joins me now. Welcome to the show. So how are you feeling about your chances on Tuesday? And what is your message to any voters who may still be undecided? Well, it's great to be with you. And I will tell you, uh, Lana, there is a lot of enthusiasm uh, and momentum here in California uh, to make a change at the top. Uh, and this is, by the way, this is among Republicans, Democrats, uh, and independents. And so what we have seen is there are a lot of undecideds uh, still, even at this late date. So in these closing last couple of days, it's all about getting our message out that now is the time to make California more affordable with a change at the top because too many families and folks can't afford to live in California and to make California more livable with our quality of life. And so there are so many issues uh, that this governor has failed on. And what our campaign is really demonstrating in the final stretch here is that we have the experience, we have the solutions, and I'm the candidate that can actually get results. Well, you heard Governor Newsom's message about the pandemic and his Republican challengers. Of course, you are one of those. And while you have been a proponent of the vaccine, you actually do say that you oppose mandates for both vaccines or masks, thinking that they ought to be handled on a local level. So a very simple no. question for you. Do no. you think that your state is already doing enough regarding COVID? Uh, we have to continue to, to do everything we can. Uh, to get over COVID-19. I'm vaccinated, my family's vaccinated, and every chance I get, I urge people uh, to get vaccinated. And I think the fact of the matter why we've seen so much frustration uh, out here in, in California uh, is because, you know, and so much confusion that this governor has sowed with, with constant changing metrics, is he came with a one-size-fits-all policy out of Sacramento. I just strongly believe that that's the wrong approach. And a state as big and as a state as diverse as California, I think it's incredibly important that we allow our local uh, health officials to make those decisions based upon the facts uh, on the ground, because what's happening in you know, San Francisco is going to be different than San Diego. And so I think that that's how you actually help people do the right thing, again, which is to get vaccinated and to make sure, again, that you don't have a one size fits all policy, because at the end of the day, uh, that leads to folks not doing the right thing. So I just want to make sure that uh, that we're all understanding you properly. You're not actually saying that you're opposed to mandates. You're opposed to state-level mandates, but you're okay with them no. if they're enacted on the state and local level, if, if those no. officials feel like that's what's best for their communities? Yeah, we have to let our local health officials uh, have the actions that, again, that, that are best at the local level. And what we saw for, you know, for example, when, when Gavin Newsom shut down our public schools in California, the, you know, the longest of any state uh, in the nation. By the way, while private schools were open, teachers were safely teaching and kids were safely learning. Uh, but this governor, uh, again, the, what that caused, not only just learning loss, but mental health issues and other, again, because he had a one-size-fits-all policy. And so I think it's incredibly important uh, that if we're going to bring our state together, 
if we're going to, you know, tell folks, to, as I said, to, you know, follow what's happening in their local level. And we saw, for example, what, what really happened to our Latino and English learners when our schools were shut down as long as they were in California. So I think that that's why you're seeing folks from all walks of life, all parts of the state, all political uh, backgrounds that want a change at the top because one party rule has not been working in California. It's time for a competition of ideas. But for the last two weeks, Governor Newsom has been rising in the polls, and polling from late August shows 58 percent of likely voters say that they approve of the way that he's handling the outbreak. You have been called the best Republican alternative to Governor Newsom. Why do you think that Democrats should choose you over the current governor? Because I bring common sense. Uh, and that's what's been, that's what's been missing uh, from this governor. Um, and and when, when, when folks go to the polls, I mean, they're looking at uh, so many issues that aren't going well in California. The fact that we have homelessness, that is exploding. I took very firm yet compassionate action in San Diego. As mayor, we were the only big city in California where we actually reduced homelessness by double digits. I'm taking a stand to make our state more affordable because right now people are voting with their feet. They're leaving. They're leaving our state because it's too expensive which is why I put forward the largest middle-class tax cut uh, in California history. We have to let California families keep more of their hard-earned money in their own pockets, or else they're not going to be able to afford to live in our great state. And that cuts across and said, that's Democrats, that's independents, and that's Republicans. And so what I offer, just like I did when I was mayor and elected mayor in a deep blue city in a deep blue state, you have to stand up for the courage of your convictions. You have to bring people together of all walks of life and all political parties. I'm able to do that, and that's exactly what our state needs right now. All right. Former mayor of San Diego, Kevin Faulkner, thank you for joining. Oh, thank you. We want to note that CBSN has reached out to Governor Newsom, as well as Republican candidates Caitlyn Jenner and Larry Elder, but have yet to hear back. You can watch our interviews with the other GOP contenders, Kevin Kiley and John Cox, on cbsnews.com. For more, let's bring in CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett. He's in Los Angeles. Major, first I want to get your reaction to what we heard from Republican candidate Kevin Falconer, the former mayor of San Diego. Well, first of all, Kevin Faulkner is running way behind in this race. Larry Elder is the leading Republican by a long margin, followed by John Cox, who ran against Gavin Newsom in the last gubernatorial election year. And Kevin Faulkner is at about 4 percent. So he's got a long way to climb. But he, like other Republicans not named Larry Elder, believed that in the last four or five weeks, this recall conversation in California has gotten off the tracks, meaning from their perspective, this should be a conversation about whether Gavin Newsom is governor of California has handled the pandemic and other underlying issues, homelessness, criminal justice, economic growth, well. And they say all of that has been derailed by Larry Elder rising to the top of the Republican field and looking much like and sounding much like a Trumpian Republican in a distinctly non-Trumpian Republican state like California. They say Larry Elder has sort of overwhelmed this race, become the personality at the top of it, allowed Gavin Newsom and every Democrat here and outside of California to train all of their fire on Larry Elder, driving down support for the recall and making Governor Newsom safer in his role when they say he should be more vulnerable. So Kevin Faulkner and John Cox, both of whom I talked to yesterday in San Diego, are like Larry Elder has sort of destroyed the recall momentum by making this race more about him than Gavin Newsom. I just sat down with Larry Elder in his home in the Hollywood Hills about an hour ago, and he said, that's not my fault. I've risen to the top of the Republican field. I'm the most popular Republican in this race. And that's the way Republicans here in this state want it to be. I'm not changing the dimensions of this race. I'm just rising to the top above career politicians. His words, not mine. John Cox, Kevin Faulkner, and the rest. So that's a conversation among Republicans. But as you indicated, the polls here in California in the last five weeks have moved in Gavin Newsom's direction. And that is consistent with Larry Elder rising in the polls. So his Republican critics are right. As Larry Elder has become more visible, Gavin Newsom has become stronger. And that's where we are right now.
Yeah, it, it is something though that's bound to happen when you have such a crowded field uh, as you do in this recall election. I want to dig a little bit deeper with you into this notion, Major, that Republicans like former President Trump and frontrunner Larry Elder are already suggesting that if Governor Newsom wins, it's because the election was rigged. Obviously, that echoes back to what we heard in the 2020 election, and we saw the consequences of that kind of false rhetoric with the Capitol riot. Um, do you think that this is going to be a repeat of 2020? How is that message of a rigged election um, being received uh, even before any of the ballots have been counted? I'm so, I'm so glad you asked me that because just an hour ago, sitting in Larry Elder's home in the Hollywood Hills, I asked him that very question. You've said that there's shenanigans already that there's something wrong with this election. And suddenly he's like, no, I really don't, I'm not, I'm, I'm much more interested in why Democrats aren't asked why they accused the Russians of changing votes for Donald Trump when that never happened. And I'm like, wait a minute, let's talk about now. He's like, look, I want people to vote. I want them to have confidence in this election. I do have a legal team ready. I said, but you haven't seen anything so far to underscore or back up your allegation of shenanigans? He really didn't wade into that. So suddenly, hmm. In the last 48 hours or so, he's backed away from that, at least on camera. He may say something different on Twitter. He may say something different on his website. But given the chance to sort of lean in and say there's something funny about this election, he didn't do that. He, in fact, said, no, I want people to vote in California. I want them to have faith in the system. If they see anything, let me know. But I think I'm going to win. And I said, all right, are you telling me that the only way this election is legitimate is if you win? He said, no. So I think he has gotten a little softer on that issue in the last 48 hours based on my conversation with him not one hour ago. Wow, uh, that is, that's some um, news there, Major, and a much more tempered response. Um, so, obviously, we we enjoy the politics, and given California's importance in the country, this is an important election, but it goes beyond just what's happening in California. Tell us what implications this recall election might have for Democrats heading into the 2022 midterms. So this recall election really sends shockwaves through Democratic party operatives nationwide. Why? Because Gavin Newsom won here so handily. No one thought he was really in any jeopardy. And then five weeks ago, the recall was five points. Maybe he could lose. And then Democrats completely weighed in. President Biden, former President Obama, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and million, millions upon millions of donations from Democratic constituencies inside the state and outside the state pouring everything into this race. Larry Elder told me that he's probably going to be outspent 10 to 1 here in the state of California because Democrats, A, did not want to have Gavin Newsom lose on policy, but they didn't want him to lose and send a message across the state that in one of the most blue states in the nation, Republicans could recall a sitting Democratic governor. They thought that that would send a miserable signal across the country to Democratic prospects in the midterm. So what have they done? They've come in with both feet, money, advertising, demonizing, if they could, Larry Elder at the top of the Republican field here in California, and very much leaning into the pandemic and mandates for masks and vaccinations, much like President Biden has recently embraced. And the thinking among Democrats is if Gavin Newsom, the sitting governor, wins and wins somewhat handily, those mechanisms and those issues will be part of the midterm election conversation next year. And of course, Gavin Newsom will be on the ballot next year also. That's another one of his hmm. rationales. Why are you recalling right. me now? We've got a chance to have this conversation next year. So those things are crucial for Democrats as they look at this race, as they look at the Virginia governor's race in November of this year and at the calendar next year. All right, Major, thank you so much for joining. Sure. On Tuesday, September 14th, CBSN will have live Election Day coverage of the California recall vote. You can stream that, of course, right here on CBSN starting at 5 p.m. Eastern.